He's throwing a rock. He's throwing a rock right now. There's a lot of cool roads in Mexico. You have your regular paved road that us industrialized slaves are used to that's nice and pretty and has lines and parks next to it. And then you have your cobblestone roads. Those are cool. They've been around for hundreds of years and they look like a ton of work to build. Then you have your dirt roads. Those are the roads that there's rumors about like, oh, if you're on a dirt road, you're in a bad neighborhood in Mako and you're probably going to get mugged. Well, no, there's actually a lot of dirt roads and sometimes you find the coolest things on those. Sometimes those dirt roads are in the middle of town. But I remember like one of the first times when I got to Mexico being on this dirt bumpy road and I'm, it was night and I was like, oh. <laughs> Uh, is that a road or am I going off an edge? It's a road, um, sort of. Wow. Yeah. And said that, that's not what we're here to talk about today. There's actually two primary types of roads in Mexico. There's the Libre and there's the Quota. The Libre is the regular roads. And when you're traveling from point A to point B, the Libre is where you don't have to pay. The Quota is the toll road. Now, it's a very corrupt toll road, and there's a lot of protest and resistance to the quotas down here because the quotas are public roads that were built with the public funds, and the agreement, I believe, was like 20 years, much like they pull on us in the USA, right, where there's going to be a toll for a while, guys, to pay for the infrastructure, and then it's going to go away because it's the people's road. Welcome to government. Toll didn't go away, and eventually, they just sold the concessions to these public roads to private corporations to continue taking the tolls. Tolls that for the most part are not used to maintain the roads, not only because of the violation of Art Article 11 of the Constitution, but because these tolls are supposed to be gone and because the money is not accounted for, toll protesting is very common in Mexico. Not only people running tolls, which I've talked about before, thousands and thousands of thousands of people simply refusing to pay the tolls, they bump the gate, they push it out of the way. Con permiso, con permiso. And they keep on going. But in a lot of areas, it's actually very common for local community activists to come and take over the entire toll. Now, it, this is sometimes hard for people, those of us from the States, to understand because we would straight go to prison or be shot for this. But they actually come to the toll, maybe a dozen of them, and they tell the people operating the toll, hey, you're out of here for a few hours. We're taking over this toll. And they open it up and they let people pass freely and legally as they should be. <laughs> Honestly, the Libre is usually a, a funner road to drive. You see cities and taco shops and scenery, but it's winding, it's through the mountains and it's slow. And so sometimes the Libre, well, it's usually a pretty decent road can take twice as long because it's like an old windy highway kind of road, whereas the quota is more like an interstate. The lack of a good open interstate system. I shouldn't say free because nothing is free, but the fact that they're charging these exorbitant, often ridiculous tolls to travel the interstate is illegal and it's a disgrace. That's why there's so many people protesting this and that's a good thing. But what happens with the other type of toll? So you have the Libre and you have the quota, but there's another toll that pops up on the Libre sometimes that you hear people talking about. And that's where locals, usually young thuggy kids on the more aggressive ones, set up their own unofficial toll. Two ways. Monday? A soda? See, photo. It's public. No, no, Start moving, they'll move. That guy's, I think, is trying to say that. No idea. Crooks. Down here? Uh, looks That's like where you have to go. Amazing. See, they, they're acting really they're cagey. Trying. Like it's kind of like it's like that a shady. Trying to run that way, dude. I pass this guy as soon as possible. He's throwing a rock. He's throwing a rock right now. What the fuck? We need to find it. Is this? Is this? Because there has to be a map. That was pretty shady. Mm-hmm. I think they're just crooks. Yeah, I think 
Do you remember when that Tangerine Travel said made a post? I think that was kind of what their post was about. Did you get him on video? What a, more like what a free road is supposed to look like. Good reason to always have bear spray with you around here. Mm -hmm. So as you can see here, I stomped the gas. Uh, the guy moved very quickly. I made sure he wasn't like right in front of the vehicle to where he couldn't get out of the way. He was kind of trying to hold his hands on the car. Uh, when I dropped it into first and put pedal to the metal and started spraying gravel everywhere, yeah, he moved real fast. You can see him kicking the car. Then he's chasing us, throwing rocks, trying to sick his dog on us. It didn't work. Didn't work. Hola, buenas tardes. So look, travelers sometimes run into these things down there, and you always have to measure your own situation, but sometimes just continuing on is the best way to not get harassed and extorted. One thing I love about Mako is people say, oh, look, look at this corruption. Look, that's terrible that that happens. The reason you see this less now in the USA and thugs on the side of the road or kids trying to screw people out of their money, whatever the case may be, toll booths on the interstate that are aggressive if you don't pay them, well, the US toll booths get very aggressive if you don't pay. Here's the thing, the reason you see this kind of stuff less in the US is because the government in the US has a monopoly on force. If you're a thug, you better be working or in bed in some way with the government and giving them their cut or they are going to take you down. Honestly, this is the first time I've seen one of these. I've heard people talk about them. Sometimes they're very mild. Sometimes they have a rope across the road. Sometimes it's not even really a toll. It's just someone standing there at a speed bump asking for money. And there's nothing illegal about that at all. The moment people start blocking the road, I have no desire to run anyone over or anything like that. But the moment thugs start blocking the road and demanding money, whether they're from the government or from the local gangbanger kids down the street, that's not okay. And it's okay to resist it. It's okay to say no. You run the gate, do in 98 kilometers per hour of course not miles per hour that would be illegal okay to defend yourself it's especially okay to defend those around you and i'm a firm believer in defending our rights with the least amount of force necessary as we see here uh, I've showed you guys videos where when I ran the toll gates, the government toll gates, or rather the private corporation concessioned out by the government toll gates, I've showed you where they've got aggressive. Remember the one guy he broke our window? There's a video of that on here. So don't think that because they're official, they're less aggressive. No one is more violent and aggressive than the government and its gangbanger buddies. However, these kind of tolls that we saw today are completely not official. This should have been a free road. This was us traveling to Mexico City to pick up family at the airport. We were specifically following the free road because we wanted to see that route. The free road led us to this little shady kind of gravelly dirt area where they had set up their own little toll there. And unfortunately, a lot of people seem to be complying with it. And the one guy, I don't know if it was on video, but the one guy in the other car, it seems like some of the locals are in on it. One of the guys said, oh, well, if you don't pay, they'll, they want it for pop, right? They want a little bit of money. If you don't pay, they'll shoot your tires. And I'm like, no, they won't, as I'm looking down at my pepper spray, preparing to deploy all. Always, you know, you determine what's safe for you and your family, but one thing that's not safe is constantly lying down and taking it up the rear and saying, because someone told me to do something, I'm gonna follow orders. Sometimes we get extorted, sometimes people take advantage of us, and sometimes we just let it go as water off our back and move on with life. But sometimes you need to say no. Unlike the USA, where if you went through tolls or did things like the Latinos do down here in protest, you would be in prison or dead, Mexico is a place where it's okay to say no. Look, I, I know a lot of times your favorite videos are the ones of me getting in trouble all over the world, but if you like this, smash that like button, subscribe, back our channel, or just check out some of the other videos, some of the other travels and adventures, some of the ones where we're not actually getting into trouble. We'll show you a lot about escaping the USA, travel, culture, and living free. All right, guys, talk to you soon. What can I do you for? <laughs> you demanding a toll? <laughs> What kind of price do you exact?